Happy morning, Academites. How are you? Welcome to the Academy Answers podcast. There's this um, lady on my blog, someone I grew up with. It's like a, a very close friend of the family. And she used to call when I was writing my blog, just started writing my blog. She used to call other people in my Facebook group. There's a Facebook group, um, Suc- Academy of Success, Happiness, and Full Potential, that's, that we started out from. And then we morphed into many other things, blogs, coaching programs, you name it. And she used to call the members of the group Academites. So that's why you hear me calling you Academites today. Um, welcome. Welcome to the Academy Answers podcast. Always a pleasure to be here with you. And I have a very exciting question today. Very, very exciting. And um, the questions get more and more challenging. And I will just go right into it. The question today is, what do I need to be happy? And (laughs) that's such a tough question, you know. Um, It's easy, but it's tough because I I don't know you um, personally. I'm not around you. And um, pretty much um, the short answer is I don't know. What I know is who you need to be to be happy. That that probably is is the the real question. Who do I need to be to be happy? Like, who, who do you need to become? because um, the things that you need um, are not external. Happiness is an inner game. And the way to be connected with the inner part of it is to connect it with the person. Because um, nothing short of a way of life is is gonna work. So you, you can always do things and feel things and pretend and or operate a certain way or force yourself to or make yourself do this or hack your way into X but you cannot live in emergency mode and that's why we are stressed that's why we're depressed uh, because we are living in a mode that we're not supposed to live in it's emergency mode it is a grind it is um, wake up rush out rush to work rush to work rush back home rush to do this rush to keep up with this rush to get this done pressure ourselves to, to achieve this and it is always just that emergency mode and our bodies are not meant to this to, to do that or emer- um, the stress levels are the stress hormones in our body are designed to keep us safe for a particular period of time it's a burst of 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 compressed uh, um, awareness that hits the brain and and the the biological chemicals are released in the body to make us act or do something that's out of the normal if you try to keep your body in that state or if your body is constantly in that state you get sick 66 percent of all illnesses are linked in some way or the other stress so The question is not what you need. The question is who you need to be, to become, to be happy. And the the, the, the first draw on happiness is always, for me, freedom. The the freedom to to express yourself, to to live from a deeper expression, to, to, to do what you want to do and to say what you want to say. Any, anything, that is taken out of its uh, its core nature cannot be happy if you like to paint and you paint for for 10 years and you're always painting and someone take away painting from you you will never be happy because it's a part of who you are it's pretty much hardwired into your existence your nature and your genetic code so anything that's not going in that direction that's not um, that doesn't take you into your nature, your zone, you, it's not a fit. And you're going to always feel uncomfortable. You're going to always feel pressured on and unhappy. Um, so the question is who you need to become. And the answer is you need to become the highest truest version of yourself who you are I always say that I think it was Charles Darwin who said that two most important days in our lives don't quote me on the author but the two most important days in our lives are the days we is the day we were born and the day we find out why we were born there's something inside of you there is a light there is a a calling 
on your life. You're not just here. And what I am upset with the school system about and, and, and the methods of socialization with, with, with the church and school and families that we grew up with and media, what I'm upset with them about is that the idea that you are either bright or not bright, you either have a talent in the in, in, in the arts or or entertainment or sports, or you don't. Um, and and if you don't have any of these, you, you, that's it. You're not meant for this. You're not cut out for for success. There's nothing you can do. It's the most ludicrous idea ever. So what we do, we we go into school systems that are geared towards grabbing the upfront obvious physical talents and, uh, and and artistic talents. So there's drama, there's a debate club, there's music, there's sports, and there's this glorification of sports because it has in a, on, in a bigger scale money, fame, celebrity status connected to it. So if you can play sports, you are a celebrity. And if you're good at the sports, you're a celebrity. And if you are good at academics, you are, you know, you get, you're given that um, prestige and your family love you and your teachers love you and everybody cheer you on and you are respected. If you don't fit into any type of this, if for example, you can, you can um, do the, the, the arts or you can probably design stuff like an interior decorator or you are a great planner and organizer or you are uh, a, a great with 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 um with identifying ideas or coming up with ideas or you're you're great with your hands in terms of being a technical person the hands-on person you're not glorified and then what happened is that we are brought up and we're conditioned to believe that you know we won't make much of our lives because um, there's nothing that you can do so you hear people saying I don't know what's special about me I never really had any talent and and it is so ridiculous that there are so many successful people who are not doing the traditional stuff for example there's this guy who does the the, the trailer the voice over for the trailers um, in um, Hollywood and, and about a decade or and a half ago when I was or maybe two decades ago when I was watching some feature on the guy the guy goes around Hollywood and um, turn up for all these um, voice over you know that not that solid voice intriguing voice that you hear when you, you you watch movie trailers he has one of those voices and he used to go around and every time the guy's limousine stops is 5,000 US dollars. 30 seconds. Now, how much people you know are value, uh, valued at, at $10,000 a minute? Because that's his value. He's doing $5,000 30 seconds. What's to stop him from being financially successful? He has this voice. So, and there are many other people who have not... Um, glorified talent, not everyday um, celebrated talent and, and attributes that everybody's um, gathering around, but valuable talent that they have found and have done marvelous jobs with it. People who have beautiful um, radio voices, people who have skills in 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 um, creative writing. People who have art skills and you name it. I can't even think of them now, but you can think of people we have heard who are just amazing and have brought themselves to to coveted level of success by doing unorthodox stuff. Things that are not run of the mill, things that are not everyday stuff. And they've made a successful life of it. But nothing in the school system or nothing in our socialization, our society, nurtures that. The people who do get to do it are really people who went for it in life. And then we have another whole long list of people who have hidden talents, who have entrepreneurial skills, who have all sorts of other talents, 
that they're covering up. It's under the carpet. It's, you know, not recognized. Nothing is done to nurture it because they have, they have given up on themselves. They, they, they realize they couldn't jump around, play music, do a sport or anything, academics. So they give in. Their family always beat upon them and say, you're worthless, you're nothing, you, you don't have any talents, you're stupid, um, that's it, go do an entry level job and try to secure that all your life. And hopefully they'll promote you to something more and hopefully you'll be able to make something decent of your life somewhere along the way. And you never get to, they never really get to connect with anything. But it's never too late. It's never too late. I often say to my friend, friends, the, the guy who is Usain Bolt coach, the fastest man ever to walk this earth. Guy wins so many Olympic goals. He has an, the, the sprint record for, for, for the, the fastest 100 meter ever in the history of athletics. And the, this guy's coach, the guy who brought him to this level, he's never run a day in his life. The, the coaches for these athletes, a lot of them have never played the game at the professional level. What am I trying to explain? I'm trying to explain to you that to become who you are, you have to be, you have to be, first believe that you are special, that there's something about you, that you're not just here, that there are no extra pieces in the universe, that you are here for a purpose. And once you start to believe that, then in no time, in short order, you'll narrow down yourself to maybe four or five things that you could excel at. And one out of that, out of that four, you could be absolutely amazing at. And that's a fact. The problem is nobody stopped to appreciate themselves or to understand or to accept their uniqueness and how special they are and how, how great they can become. People think that greatness is reserved for some people with some special talent that is obvious from the get-go. You know, like people just come out here and just do it well and, and that's it. But many people who you see in high positions, I heard Kobe Bryant in an interview one saying that he grew up in Italy and you know in Europe they're always playing football so uh, he's playing football in the evening with the guys for two hours then he, when they leave he would be playing basketball two hours by himself the first um, season of basketball that they played in the summer leagues he scored zero baskets he never made one single shot so so much for natural talent Kobe Bryant I'm talking one of the the greatest basketball player of all times certainly in the top five certainly in the top five or top ten and he didn't come out shining Michael Jordan was cut from his, his basketball team in high school so so much for that obvious get-go talent. They worked. They liked it. They realized that if there's something in them that gravitates them to it. And they pursued it with all their energies. Because the great thing to understand. And you might think I'm not doing happiness here. But that's exactly what I'm doing. Because I'm trying to get you to understand that unless you become who you were meant to be, happiness will always elude you. Because there'll be something in your spirit. There'll be a higher desire in your spirit that is always wanting to do that thing. Or always feeling that there's something missing. If you live your life with that emptiness over you, you'll never find true happiness. You'll enjoy yourself, you'll have fun, but as far as your conscience, as far as how you feel inside is concerned, you'll never get it. So, I'm saying that if you 
there has to be suffering. Meaning that you'll either suffer from the pain of not being in a, a living mode, a mode of living that resonates with you, that is important to you, that matters to you. You'll suffer from that pain, that regret that sits on your consciousness and your heart every day. You'll either suffer from that or you suffer from the process of cultivating that which is inside of you. Either way, there is suffering. The only difference is that one suffering leads to ultimate fulfillment and the other suffering leads to a life of misery. The suffering in pursuit of who you were meant to be will always be a better choice than the one that is full of fear and doubt and apprehension and disbelief about what you can really and truly do with your life or who you can become. And there is that, that is just um, at the root to misery. But the other suffering that brings you into the process of becoming a better you is the ideal way because there will be suffering anyway but then at the end of it all there's fulfillment or there is fulfillment even in the process of doing it because you'll be happy doing it because it will be so much you that you would do it for free or it's easy to do it for free i remember brian tracy in an interview this guy's one of the world best sales coach ever motivational speaker wrote about 13 books many many, multiple multiple bestsellers and he said that when he was getting into speaking he did 350 free speeches before he got paid for a single one let that sink in he did 350 free speeches before he got paid for a single one there are guys out here in the modern era on youtube doing 250 videos before they manage to monetize one video or get one commission get one payment from a single video there are guys who are out here for 18 years i remember this this jamaican artist who has been in the grind and the trenches for 23 years before he got his break it's a choice it's a decision as to where it's gonna go what is gonna be and who you are gonna be in this process. Are you gonna cop out? Or are you gonna go for it? There are three types of people when it comes on to the work. Three types of people when it comes on to the work of going where they want to go and getting to be who they want to be so that, so that they can secure the long-term happiness for themselves and their families. A happiness which is connected to wealth, enlightenment, empowerment, and freedom three types of people when it comes on to the process one type of guy turns up his nose one type of guy and saying that yeah that's just crazy i'm gonna do that and he whines and he slacks off and he cops out the other type of guy don't show up at all he decided that he's not even gonna do it i'm, I'm not gonna even try i'm just gonna be up here i'm a bum I, I guess my mom screwed me over my family wasn't this i'm sick i'm 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 uh, I'm, I'm handicapped i have this illness i can't do that that's a guy who don't show up don't turn up at all one guy turns up his nose second type of guy don't turn up and the third type of guy turns up his sleeve gets to work gets in the trenches and gets in the ground. So happiness is inextricably linked to freedom, physical and mental freedom. The freedom in the mind to know that you are pursuing something that you believe in, that you believe that you were called to do, you were meant to do, that you were created to do. And the freedom, the physical freedom to produce and be who you want to be, with whom you want to produce it, and when you want to do that. That wealth-based freedom, that enlightenment to realize that my life is meant to contribute, to bring my art to the world, contribute it to enough people and to enough causes, and ultimately 
the value will automatically come back to make my life the way I want it to be. And that's where your happiness lies. Your happiness lies in finding yourself and deciding to commit to dedicate the rest of your life to pursuing your highest, truest version of you. And once you are doing that you, once you get to be that you, everything else will fall into place. There's always the petty minor problems, issues in life. We don't get, we're not immune from that. We don't get a pass from that. But I'm saying, I'm not talking about Un, um, unpleasant experiences which co- will come I'm not talking about bursts of pleasure and enjoyment I'm talking about true happiness true happiness that you feel when you sums it up when you think about your life and when you say okay I'm in a good place I've done well for myself this, this, this is what it meant to be who I am and to achieve success so that's where your happiness is that's how you find it Your happiness is not what do you need or what do you need to get. Your happiness is who you need to become. And um, it might sound highfalutin. It might sound mumbo-jumbo to some people. But that's exactly why it escaped most people. Because people are looking at the surface. And everything that's on the surface always just passes on. Passes on. It's open up to all elements and turns and twitchings and the trills and spills of life. The things that stand, that with stand the test of time or deeper stuff the fundamental things the things that go to the heart of everything so that's where it is who you need to become and that's a question you should ask yourself and you start out by saying what is my life about and once you find that once you find why you are here then everything else comes together have a great day thank you guys for listening always a pleasure Find me on lowermotivatorcar.com. Share this with someone who might help. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Lowermotivatorcar. Have a good day.